There are three lines of defense within the immune system. The first line of defense is the skin, which prevents us from getting into contact with diseases in the first place. When you do get into contact with something, for example if you have been stung by a bee or have caught a disease that causes inflammation, this happens through the release of histamines and dilation of the blood vessels near the skin to allow for more blood to go to the area of the body affected. The reason this occurs is so that more white blood cells can get to the area and fight the infection. You would notice that the affected area would become quite inflamed and sore. The white blood cells have a variety of purposes. There are three major types, neutrophils, macrophage, lymphocyte. The first purpose that they serve is to conduct phagocytosis. This is where a group of cells will engulf the bacteria and break it down. They will then produce proteins that will break the bacteria down or that will stick to it. The only downside to this is that the cells do not have a memory. This means that if you get attacked again, they cannot remember how they dealt with it which results in a reactive rather than preventative system. There is a third line of defense made up of T cells and B cells. The difference between these cells and the second line of defense is that these cells actually have a memory component. T cells will memorize and create a complementary receptor for an antigen for the disease coming in and they will then clone themselves and stay in your body in wait for the disease to reoccur. T cells form sub T cells which will react in different ways. Some of the sub cells will aid your immune system while some others will modify it in order to deal with the disease invasion. B cells produce antibodies and also have a reaction and a memory. If the disease invades again they will produce plasma cells. Plasma cells produce a large amount of antibodies which stick to the bacteria in order to make them less harmful. Vaccines work together with the T cells and the B cells by exposing you to an inert form of the bacteria or disease that your body can then react to and create memory cells for. This therefore creates a response to a disease or a bacteria that is inert and should not be harmful. There is one danger in that vaccines can sometimes have active bacteria within them and are usually screened for this but overall they are aimed at boosting your immune system. A further tool is used when dealing with disease and bacteria and it's called an antibiotic. The antibiotics are taken to try to kill the bacteria that cause the disease. There are many things to consider as there are a variety of different antibiotics available. Some examples of these types of antibiotics are detailed below. Broad range. These are antibiotics that will damage a lot of bacteria. This type has both pros and cons. One of the cons being that in order to aid digestion we have a lot of bacteria within our gut. If we were to damage this bacteria, it would cause problems with digestion. This is why we must be careful when we consider which range of antibiotics to be used when treating a particular infection. Penicillin is one of the most commonly used antibiotic. Penicillin attacks the wall of different bacteria, resulting in them breaking apart. Another downside though to some antibiotics is that some diseases have a high mutation rate and can build up an immunity to the antibiotic. These are known as superbacteria. MRSA or MRSA is a prime example of superbacteria. The reason that diseases such as smallpox have been eradicated is that they had a relatively low mutation rate and by utilizing antibiotics we were able to get rid of them fairly quickly. Finally we will look at allergies. Allergies are as a result of a malfunction of the immune system where our bodies have an immune reaction to something that is not harmful and produces allergens. These include things like hay fever caused by pollen or cats and dogs for some other people. You could get a reaction of inflammation and a release of histamines where your body reacts to it as if it is a threatening disease. So first line of defense which covers our skin and avoids getting into contact with disease in the first place.